So I wanted to follow up with a video showing the whole reason I was developing these uh, custom tracker uh, objects in Python for FreeCAD. Uh, and those custom tracker objects, if you saw, if you take a look at the previous videos, you see how they work. And they're just these basic uh, Python classes that modify the coin scene graph directly, generating nodes or points and edges or wires. And, and they're uh, interactive so that you can click on them, drag them, multi-select them, rotate them in place, and you can even link them together and get them to behave that way. So I'm, as I'm going along, I'm building more and more features uh, into those base tracker classes to make them uh, more powerful, to create a much more powerful interactive set of 2D geometry that is rendered directly at the scene graph level and doesn't exist as geometry in FreeCAD itself. What I've created is this tool. And if I click on this button here, we go into it. And you see that I have uh, the same nodes and tangents that I had in the previous video. But in addition to that, I've got these curves now that weren't there before. And these curves are another custom tracker that's actually built off of the same class that generates these line trackers. And you see that if I mouse over it, there's a highlight that takes place that also displays uh, the endpoints of the curve, its center point, and the radius lines uh, connecting the points together. And I can click on the curve and I can select it to make it active. And if I want to edit the curve, I click and I drag. And now this is the advantage to having these custom classes is that there's a context for the drag operation. That certain drag behaviors are desirable because of the surrounding context. For in the case of this curve, when I adjust this curve, whatever adjustment I make, I need to make sure that the endpoints of the curve are locked to its surrounding tangents. The tangents themselves are not going to change because I'm adjusting the curve between the tangents. If I want to change the tangents, I have to pick the point of intersection and drag it, and that will adjust those tangents. So if I if I drag the curve, you see that it's it basically slides it along its center line to make sure that it, it stays locked to its tangents. But I can pick any point that I want and make that adjustment, as you can see. Oops. And I even if I hold down shift, I've even enabled micro dragging. Of the curve. So that works pretty well. And one of the other things I added was um, validation. So as the curve is slid along its tangents, if the sum of, uh, if the curves, if the curves intersect or overlap, they turn red. And basically what's happening is if the tangent length of the two curves, if the sum of their tangents is greater than the distance between the points that connect them, uh, then it's invalid. You've got an invalid solution and that needs to be fixed. So here we go, we have the endpoints of this curve is intersecting those other two curves, and as, as that error condition is detected, the curves are turned red. Uh, and so if you try to make that permanent, let go, and, and uh, excuse me, end the drag operation, it resets to its original value because that's not valid. So as long as they don't overlap, it's okay. The other thing I can do is I can pick the point and I can drag it, and you'll see that the curves themselves are recalculated and adjusted as I drag. Um, and if I adjust my PI in the wrong way, you see that those curves overlap, and so that's not allowed either. Uh, now, um, there's a few bugs, you know, still in the system, and there's still a few things, uh, a few problems to work out. But for the most part, it's really functioning in the context and within the parameters that I had intended. So I'm, I'm really quite happy with this. Uh, the only other thing, the other thing that I'm working on right now that you might want to take note of is uh, a panel here at the left that handles uh, directly uh, displaying and manipulating the data. So if I pick, for example, a point of intersection, you see on the left that the name of the PI is listed. This is node one. It's just indexed from zero, zero, one, two, three, and four. So this is node one and it gives me the position. And if I pick up and drag node one a little bit, I don't have an error condition. There we go to see that the position information changes. So uh, I'm working on making that two ways. So if you change values in here, I'll change the position here. Um, and, and of course, the rest of this uh, is going to get enabled in time. And the way I'm managing that actually is I've built a publisher subscriber event system under the hood uh, between the geometry that's on the screen and the uh, controls and the panels. And, and getting those to work together so that changes here are published to, you know, the geometry and changes in the geometry are published back. And you can see that it's starting to work. And it actually it came together a lot faster than I thought it would. It, it's working quite well. So I'm confident I'll be able to get this to work at least uh, reasonably well here within a couple of weeks. And all of this is pushing towards a 0 0.1 
alpha release of this, which in my mind is just having a, just having a functional horizontal alignment design tool. 